Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your valuable time and association with us. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you
There are many cases of divorce and out of dissatisfaction, the children leave the protection of their parents. Especially in this age of Kali, family life is being reduced. Everyone is becoming self-centered because that is the law of nature. Everyone has, everyone, if, even if one has sufficient money to maintain a family, the, the situation is such that no one is happy in family life. Consequently, according to the Van Ashram Institution, one has to retire from family life in middle age. One should voluntarily retire from family life at the age of 50 and go to Vrindavan or a forest. This is recommended by Srila Pallad Maharaj in the Bhagavatam 755. There is no benefit in transferring from one forest to another. One must go to the Vrindavan forest and take shelter of Govinda. That will make one happy. <clears throat> the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is therefore constructing a Krishna Balaram temple to invite its members, as well as outsiders, to come and live peacefully in a spiritual atmosphere. That will help one become elevated to the transcendental world and return back to Godhead, back home, back to Godhead. Another sentence in this verse is very significant. Kutumbika kurudati vai jainaya. Once one, one, one's mind is disturbed in so many ways, he satisfies himself by becoming angry with his poor wife and children. The wife and children are naturally dependent on the father, but the father being unable to maintain the family properly, becomes mentally distressed and therefore chastises the family members unnecessarily. As stated in Bhagavatam 12.2.9, Achinna Dara Dravina Yasyanti Giri Karanam. Being disgusted with family life, one separates from the family by divorce or by some other means. If one has to separate, why not willingly? Systematic separation is better than forced separation. Forced separation cannot make anyone happy, but by mutual consent or by the Vedic arrangement, one must separate from his family affairs at a certain age and fully depend on Krishna. This makes one's life successful. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this, these series of verses give us analogies of the life in the material world. And you can see each one of the analogies sort of, sort of indicates that to live, to lie, to try to live happy in a material world is compared to so many difficulties that one has to undergo in order to squeeze out or try to squeeze out a little bit of happiness. As it's mentioned, is there any happiness in the material world? Well, the material world is created in such a way as to frustrate the living entity's desire to enjoy here. That is, that is the arrangement by the Supreme Lord. The love of the Supreme Lord for his living entities who are separated from him is shown by his arrangement not to allow us to stay separated from him by giving us a comfortable position in the material world. He creates the material world. And so we, our attempts to enjoy in this material world are always fraught with so many difficulties. And ultimately we have to die. And Krishna arranges everything. Why? Because he loves the living entities. He doesn't want them to somehow or other come to the conclusion that it's a nice place here and they can live without him. They can't. So he makes it in such a way as to remind us, you know, this place is what it is. It's as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, 
Dukalayam Ashashvatam. It's temporary, it's miserable. And unless we uh, have that clear understanding in our spiritual life, we cannot really make advancement on the path. Because any attempts to continue to propagate the idea that happiness comes by activities in the material world will simply create more and more diversions away from the goal of life and ultimately cause one to find difficulties in their relationship with Krishna. In other words, they'll put material things first and Krishna somewhere in the background. And therefore, one can never find satisfaction. Krishna is the ultimate principle of all success in life. Prabhupada used to say everyone is looking for happiness. Everyone's looking for complete and continuous happiness. That is found in Krishna only. And Krishna's in the, in the devotional service of the Lord. And so these verses here are giving us a little bit of insight on how we should not try to make a nice arrangement for this material world. Of course, here it's being speaking that this is the materialistic family life. We can make a comparison between family life and spiritual life, and we also can compare it with the materialists. So here, 99%, almost 100%, of the people in the material world simply struggle to squeeze out. If people don't get divorced or if they don't have problems, the husband goes off in one direction, the wife goes off in another direction, the kids go off in another direction. And everybody calls themselves a family, but nobody really spends much time or is interested in that in association with family members. If there's young children, they do it as an obligation sometimes, but otherwise it's just a big struggle. That's why Prabhupada would say, when it's noted there that licit or illicit, it's all illicit. Why? Because it's material. And the whole arrangement in the material world is simply an anomaly. It has no basis. So. We belong with Krishna in the spiritual world. That is our ultimate place of existence, our place of prosperity, our place of satisfaction, our place of ultimate pleasure and continuous loving relationships with not only Krishna, but with all the residents in the spiritual world. This is, uh, this is our goal. And the Shastra is completely uh, emphasize this continuously so we can wake up to the fact that this material world is not our happiness. So now, sometimes you say, well, is there any happiness in the material world? You know, sometimes we think, oh, these statements are just, you know, they're too much, or they're just, you know, there's just eulogies. They're not really, is there any happiness in the material world? I mean, how can people go on if there's no happiness? And there would be no life if there was no happiness. Well, the, the Shastras do say there is some happiness, but here, and it's mentioned here, that the happiness derived from society, friendship, and love is like a drop of water in the scorching heat of the desert. So there is birth, the sufferings of birth, the sufferings of growing up, the sufferings of old age, the sufferings of relationships, the sufferings of disease, the sufferings of, of disappointment in, in trying to fulfill one's desires here, and the dangers that are all around us that can attack the living entity at any time and simply, uh, uh, you know, take him out of the material body. <laughs> Now, this place is what it is. <laughs> we just have to understand it and be convinced that this is not our home. Therefore, this helps us to really, really go deep. So this drop here, I mean, as we were saying, this drop of water in the desert has some 
has some indication because this keeps people motivated in that way of going. They keep hoping to get another drop somewhere. Uh, material happiness is one step above material suffering. So what is that material happiness? The society, friendship and love. In other words, family life. That's what it basically comes down to. People, people center their whole life around the family and they may find a, a, set, a drop of satisfaction in that relationship. But then if you're in a desert and you're looking for water and you haven't had water in a long time, when you get to a point of where your thirst is too much, you start imagining seeing water, and this is called a mirage. So you see, and this happens with animals in life, but also people who spend time in the desert, they start to hallucinate and they see these oases in the desert. It looks like a pond of water. It looks like very refreshing, something that is just exactly what I need to relieve the suffering of my present condition. And they run towards that, but what do they find? It's just another pile of sand. It's nothing more than an illusion. And so this is the happiness in material life, trying to get one drop here and one drop there and one drop here and one drop there. Try to put the drops together. You can't do that because they don't go together. So this is the material world. So here Prabhupada said, why wait to things become so difficult? Why not use one's life? And then he gives the Van Ashram system that when one, one in family life, and this applies to the devotees also, when the children grow up and the children are on their own, then, then the parents can go to a holy place such as uh, Vrindavan, Mayapur, Hardwar, Rishikesh, you know, Rameshwaram, some of the holy, the holy places, and spend the rest of their life simply absorbing themselves in service to Krishna and hearing about the glories of the Lord accordingly. Uh, this, so this is, this is actually what we call the Vanaprastha stage voluntarily accepting a type of separation which allows one to move forward in life towards the ultimate goal of life. Because Taktva Deham Purna Janmani Naiti Mameti Surjana Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that at the end of life, if you can remember that the fact that I don't take birth in this material world and I don't any, all of my activities are divyam, they're transcendental, they have nothing to do with anything that goes on the, in the material world, although they may look like that. If one has this realization, then one automatically reaches the kingdom of God. That is Krishna's statement in the Bhagavad Gita. And so one has to prepare in order to get to that consciousness. And here, this is a recommended that the Van Ashram system means to retire from family life and uh, spend the rem rem remaining time in the uh, holy places. And um, and for women, sometimes it looks like it's just as, and this is being emphasized only for the male part of the family, but actually it's there for the women also that women can go to holy places and live their life out serving the deity in that particular holy places. And that is called, that is called, I'm sorry, that is called the, the um, Vanaprastha stage of life where the woman takes a, a vow of renunciation and she serves the deity so nicely. She makes friends with other residents of the holy places and she can be happy in that association and serving the Lord to the end of their, her life. And the man also, but the men, it's also mentioned that the men should also travel and go from place to place and um, also spread Krishna consciousness 
in the final parts of their life. Of course, that may not always be so easy for some of us. Uh, Prabhupada did it, and Prabhupada set the example, but uh, we are not Prabhupada. <laughs> So the men can also go to holy places and live their life out there and also serve the deities nicely. And then at the time of death, it becomes natural and easy to remember Krishna. And Krishna says, yam yam vapi sparam bhavam taktva ante kalevaram tam tam evaiti konte yatsadata bhava bhavitaha. Whatever you remember at the time of death, that destination you automatically achieve. In another place, Krishna says, those who worship the demigods, they go to the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits take birth among such beings. Those who worship the forefathers will go to the forefathers, and those who worship me will come to me. So as we get on in years, it becomes more and more important to see how to finish our life and full Krishna consciousness. Family responsibilities are reduced, uh, family relationships become less, and when more and more one can uh, absorb themselves in Krishna consciousness and find complete happiness and satisfaction, and also preach Krishna consciousness if the opportunity is available. Of course, we, we can create the opportunity. So here, this is something that we can consider instead of this analogy here is that people work so hard and spend so much energy just to somehow or other maintain the family. But Krishna is actually the maintainer. He's a, he says that Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suhidam Sarvabhutana Shantamam Yantam Rich Titi. Yeah, I am the proprietor, I'm the controller, I am the enjoyer, I, I am also the maintainer. And one who accepts Krishna's maintains, maintenance becomes fully maintained by the Lord. Uh, the problem is a lot of times we don't, we don't trust these statements, we think we have to work so hard to maintain ourselves. A little, a little effort in that area is required in order to bring about Krishna's mercy. But generally, the, the conditions of living entities thinks that, and the father who also think, oh, without without me, well, how will the family go on? And without, the mother might think, without me, how will the family go on? And everyone is thinking, I'm so important. But ultimately, Krishna is maintaining everyone, including those who will maintain others. But we have to play our role in this material world. But if we get absorbed in our role and forget about what is the goal of life, and that is to, be, to become fully Krishna conscious and go back home, back to Godhead. Therefore, we have what is called grihasta life. Grihasta life means living in the family and, and using everything that Krishna provides, including our time, energy, intelligence, uh, and resources, everything in the service of the Lord. And that is Grihasta life. And that is one of the ways to finish our, um, in other words, to live in that atmosphere where one is in full Krishna consciousness and not so much absorbed in simply the activities of family maintenance like that. Uh, but this goes on in the material world, and especially we live in Western societies. The Western societies are contrary to any good spiritual qualities. They simply push people into the direction of more, more, and more. More money, more energy used for enjoying your senses, more money created and so you can buy all of the things that are being put on the market and create and help the economy more more and more so this more just destroys the living entities good qualities where they don't have time or even they even lose the importance of how the importance of human life is to is to go back home back to godhead Okay, so 
here and mentions again, climbing the mountain is like trying to maintain the family and getting up the mountain. There are so many thorns, stones to cut the feet of the traveler who's going up the mountain. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions from the devotees. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Vo, Hare Vo. Dandruf Pranam Maharaj, very beautiful class, very clear and crisp message for all of us <laughs> through this uh, purport of Srila Prabhupada. When you were saying there was there is uh, problems all the time, I was laughing. I'm like, yeah, certainly. When you're small, there is school and then college comes and then you think you'll be happy and then you continue doing. And then, of course, the family life comes in and then you think, OK, now should be OK. But then kids come in now. There you go. You're busy for another 20 years and who know, knows what's happening after that. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very beautiful class. Thank you. And the in-laws don't like you for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, Maharaj. I, I can't open all the secrets, Maharaj. <laughs> Dear devotees, if anybody has any questions or realizations, please go ahead. Please raise your hand or unmute yourself. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yes. Thank you, Raj. That was that was a Prabhupada purport. Thank you. You just gave. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you so much for a wonderful class. As, as Raj Prabhuji just said, it was very clear and very direct and, and it all makes so much sense. And as you were speaking, I was thinking about how fortunate we are to be in ISKCON because Srila Prabhupada has created this movement with a built-in system for us all to advance so beautifully, you know, as you were talking about, um, you know, um, devotees going toward Vanaprastha and, you know, even for, even for women, um, you know, we have those opportunities and it's by the grace of Srila Prabhupada that we all have such a way to be able to do this and to be able to progress in our, in our spiritual lives and, and go back home to Godhead. So thank you for pointing that out. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And also this whole class is encouragement. Um, I know to me and I'm sure to everyone on the call to, to go deeper into our spiritual lives and do so in a way that, um, you know, that uh, again, follows Srila Prabhupada, the way that Srila Prabhupada has, has given this to us. So thank Prabhupada's, you. Prabhupada's going to take us back to Godhead. All we have to do is hold on to his dhoti. <laughs> mm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Dear devotees, if anybody has any questions, please uh, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, this is a very, very impactful class and, and the message. And I joined a little bit late, and when I was uh, reading the purpose, I was saying this is a heavy purpose. Um, but I think this is very relevant uh, to wake us up. Um, Maharaj, I have a question uh, in the sense that in the purports, you know, Prabhupada mentions about the normal family life, Grihastha life to be very, very troublesome with a lot of expectations. But even when we have, uh, we are practicing devotional service uh, and our family and the children are also participating in that, we still go through that motions about there is a lot of expectations um, and uh, frustrations uh, because the expectations are not fulfilled and the children want something else and the wife wants something else. But overall, there are still progressing towards Krishna consciousness. So how do we approach that? Because the, the, the emotions and the feelings uh, and uh, the thoughts uh, are still there with those things. But then how do we align it with our Krishna consciousness um, approach, Maharaj? 
as long as we're in a material world, no matter what ashram you're in, you're going to have to struggle. That's just the way it is. But then again, you have to struggle in a way that will bring you closer or you move you along the path in devotional service. So the, pro, the, the principle that is the foundation for making the struggle more, of what we say, uh, successful and the tools that are need to be applied. And one of them is, is simplicity. Hmm. Learning to live according to your needs. I think the entanglement with so many needs or so-called needs creates unnecessary problems. And that takes our time and energy away from, you know, devotional activity. So either family life or brahmachari life, sannyas life, or whatever ashram one's in, this principle of sim simplicity has to be understood accordingly. Accordingly, I mean, that means uh, according to the particular situation one finds themselves in, and then move forward. And that takes some advice. And also some consultation. That's why we have a family of devotees. So we're going to struggle, no matter what we do, just the way the material world is. When you get to the platform of pure devotion, then the struggle becomes nice. And it's just sweet and wonderful. But as long as we still have any attachment to this material world, there's going to be that element of struggle. And uh, yeah, but now this verse doesn't indicate you should give up your ashram. We should not. Prabhupada does say that at one point one should move forward in in that in the next stage, and that is to take Vanapras or go into a holy place. So that comes at a certain time in life, and basically it means that when when all the re family responsibilities are neat, are completed, in other words, the children are growing up and they're on their own, they have their own families, then the parents can uh, start moving towards you know, holy places or spending more, spending full time doing devotional service. And that's, that, that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, this verse is indicating that, you know, to maintain the family and to maintain oneself while trying to maintain the family is going to be a struggle. And this is because the material world is designed to give us difficulties. And you can't satisfy any, everyone. It's not possible. Even though you try to satisfy everyone. Prabhupada quotes that one verse, a man, he's, his whole life he's trying to satisfy his family. And towards the end of life, his and he wants to retire from family life. And, they, and the, the wife is complaining, what did you do? You never did anything. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, you know, you know, she, you still have this to do, and you still have that to do, and you still have this to do, and <laughs> and you never made me happy. So now you want to, you know, retire. <laughs> so it goes on like this. <laughs> it's, uh, but this is materialistic household life, and sometimes it. it, it falls into devotional uh, circles too but <laughs> so this is the so we have to uh, we have to deal with that in such a way is that we were all we're all understanding well yeah that's why bring the family together and make sure everyone is engaged in krishna consciousness have kirtans together read Prabhupada's books together take prashadam together Go on, when you go on vacations, go to spiritual places and associate with other spiritually minded people. And if we may center all of our lives around the spiritual activities, then the family is Vaikuntha. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, it's, 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 Very it's, beautiful. it's just, we, we always have to think what, how can I, uh, I can, how can I move forward and bring everyone else that I'm responsible for 
to move forward in life. That's that's important. Thank you, Ditesh Prabhu. Very beautiful question. And thank you, Maharaj. Very beautiful and clear answer. Very, very beautiful. In fact, Maharaj, a question came into my mind. When uh, when we are not in Krishna consciousness and we we are like uh, that deer that is running for uh, water and for pleasure here and there and thinks this is pleasure, as you mentioned in your class too, we get a small happiness and then we think, oh, wow, I'm happy. But actually it is, uh, uh, you know, at the older times when they were uh, putting somebody's head into the water, and then they take it out for one second and he thinks, wow. And then again in the water. So all that misery is there. Um, but now that we come into Krishna consciousness, uh, after years of struggle, thanks to Prabhupada, we realize, oh, wow, this is the real life. You know, you can't live without chanting. You can't live without devotees. You, you want to have them always in your life, always around you. You want to listen to the lectures always. Uh, Hari Katha is contagious. You know, you don't want to get out of it. Uh, it's so beautiful. Uh, but by the time, Maharaj, you are like, uh, for example, you're 35, 40, uh, and uh, you have done your investments here and there. You have worked hard. And now to now how to, to deal with those investments, Maharaj? Because, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a point of life where, where certainly you want Krishna. You don't want the investments. But the investments are there, and uh, and now now certainly you want Krishna. You just want Krishna. You don't want nothing else. Uh, without <laughs> Krishna, is uh, is nothing. Yeah, the stronger you want Krishna, the more Krishna will help you by making arrangements to, to come closer to Him. It's based on desire. The desire awakens the intelligence and the mercy. The intelligence becomes a factor of understanding how to increase our love for Krishna, our, our time in serving Krishna. And then Krishna's mercy manifests in the form of the opportunities. If we do, it's just based on desire. And then the strength of that desire brings about Krishna's mercy in different ways. Krishna wants us back more than we want to go back. <laughs> That's yeah. a fact. <laughs> And so we might we might feel strong about it. But you should understand Krishna feels much stronger. <laughs> that's that's why he comes to the material world in order to bring the conditioned souls back to him, and make arrangements for for them to come back. That's the Lord. He personally takes the, the trouble to come here to pick a, pick us up. That's his mercy. So uh, yeah intensifying that desire which will bring about the intelligence the intelligence will also bring about the mercy and the mercy will come in the form of Krishna, Krishna it will come in the form of Krishna's arrangements yes Maharaj 100% agree I was one day uh, searching on Google uh, chanting group ISKCON or, or chanting group and look how here, where I ended up Maharaj this is, uh, <laughs> this, is uh, this is the beauty of Krishna I, I thank so much this group this gives uh, me every morning this bliss that uh, I can't live without it, Maharaj. There is a, I, I, I don't want uh, one day, a single day of my life to be without this Krishna Katha and be without uh, chanting. So this is certainly mercy of Krishna that I ended up here and in some other, you know, devotees group. So it's so beautiful. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very true. Very true. If you have Thank a you. desire, Krishna provides. That's for sure, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. You are the perfect example for the philosophy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing, Maharaj. I'm just a stupid idiot sitting here trying to get something uh, from all of you great devotees. I'm nothing, Maharaj. You can, you can give us your eagerness. That will help us to progress. <laughs> Maharaj, you bless me, please. Please bless me, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Yeah, my best wish is that you, you continue to move in that direction where and you, the Krishna will, you, you, all your desires will be satisfied in Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Srimati Devi Dasi Ji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. It's all to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you so much for the nice class, Guru Maharaj. Um, I have a question. I, um, I see in the purport, like uh, Srila Prabhupada is telling about uh, taking up retirement voluntarily and uh, um, settling down in Vrindavan. Um, but is it possible for uh, ladies, Guru Maharaj? 
You mentioned that, yeah, at a certain age. That, you know, when you read deeper and you hear about Prabhupada, you know, when their family responsibilities are, are uh, you know, have completed. And the main family responsibilities is the children, growing them up and situating them in their, in their life. And then when you, there's no longer any responsibility in that direction, then it becomes more natural and easy. And for a woman, it talks about that, that they can go to holy places or holy places may even mean a temple and live in the temple or live in the holy place and serve the deity. And that is retirement for a woman. In other words, they just become absorbed in Krishna consciousness. That's all. And they still have, have the family atmosphere in the association of other devotees like that. And so that's there. Yeah. But first, first is to stay Krishna conscious and finish your responsibilities with the family. Yeah, but uh, for uh, for women, the responsibilities never end. I think, Guru Maharaj, because <laughs> even after after kids grown up and they have their own family life, they expect parents to be around them and always help uh, um, them in all sorts of their family lives. Um, so I was thinking in that direction. So so we have to uh, voluntarily cut off uh, from all those um, attachments. Guru yeah. Maharaj. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prabhupada tells the story of Kailash. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard that story of Kailash. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that yeah yeah that there is um, there's always some reason not to cut it off. <laughs> yes, yes, Karmaraj. The thing is, if we die with this family affection, that means we take birth again. So we have to transform that, transfer that affection to Krishna. And we still have uh, attachment for the for the family in the sense that we are serving the family for the benefit of the family, but that's all. And then that service cuts off at a certain time. You did your part. You grew. You, you helped them grow up, and now they're on their own, <laughs> and they have to live their life. I find it the opposite way, where the children you know, want to get away from the parents and the parents don't want to get away from the children. Yeah, that's that is not, also true, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> that's not also yeah. true. That's that's the main thing. <laughs> the parents want to come move in with the children after they're married and tell the children how to run the family. <laughs> that's, that, that becomes a problem. Let them make their mistakes and that way they can grow up. It's good, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Krishna will give you the opportunity. Yes, good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karma. Sri Devi. <laughs> Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble, humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. First, I want to say a huge thank you for telling me the story of Kailash and finally getting me to move. <laughs> That's one of the things I want to thank you for because as I'm reading this, I'm thinking to myself, thank you, Gurudev, for saving me. That's one. But as you were giving the class, I was remembering these two verses that were taught to us as part of, I think, Bhakti something. It was not the regular course. But this was so instructive and so important to me in my poor. I just wanted to share. It is Pandavas retire timely. And it is Srimad Bhagavatam 1.15.37, where Prabhupada is saying so clearly how one must retire from family life and why one must retire from family life. So would you kindly allow me to read a couple of sentences from those purports? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, this is 1.15.37, and Maharaj Yudhishthir is setting the example. Besides that, being an ideal king, Maharaj Yudhishthir wanted to retire just to set an example for others. As soon as there is some young fellow, it's the last paragraph, as soon as there is some young fellow to look after household affairs, one should at once retire from family life 
to uplift oneself to spiritual realization. One should not rot in the dark well of household life till one is dragged out by the will of Yamaraj. Modern politicians should take lessons from Maharaj Yudhishthir about voluntary retirement from active life, making room for younger generation. Also, retired old gentlemen should take lessons from him and leave home for spiritual realization before being forcefully dragged away to meet death. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada is so clear when, when he's describing this. Yeah, because as one is leaving the body, one is remembering their, their attachments and their attachments are going. And so if we stay in the family life, that attachment will again, of course, create that desire. And then, uh, well, the desire will still be there. And then one has to take birth again in order to fulfill that material desire. Yeah, and so that's why the, Vana, the Vedic system, Vanashram system, is a natural system of how to live life. Early life is education, development, growth, and then one comes to the point of family life, and then family responsibilities, taking care, and then finishing the responsibilities and moving on to the next stage of life, which is retirement, and absorbing himself in that devotional activity. And for the men, they can also take the formal sannyas order of life and, and then uh, preach Krishna consciousness to the end of life. So this is all organized in a very systematic way. And, and Krishna says, Chaturvanya Mayashrisa Guna Karma Vibhaga Saha. I am the creator of this system. I this system is created by me. So it's not something artificial that is actually created by the Supreme Lord to do to arrange for the social and spiritual development of the living entity as they go through different stages of life. So as we get older and responsibilities in the family are meant to become less then more and more time and attention on the goal of life is of getting absorbed in Krishna. And then when you leave the body in that consciousness, then, then back home, back to Godhead. And that, that's, that's a successful life. Yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Those uh, two purports are really very wonderfully. Srila Prabhupada just lays it out straightforward, you know, and just very straightforward. The same thing happens in verse number 39, the last paragraph. But I think everybody can read on their own also. If you like, I can read the last two sentences there if you think it's okay. Go ahead. It's interesting. Yes, here it goes. Srila Prabhupada says, everyone's life must be so arranged that the last stage of life, say at least the last 15 to 20 years prior to death, can be absolutely devoted to the devotional service of the Lord to attain the highest perfection of life. It is really foolishness to engage oneself all the days of one's life in material enjoyment and fruitive activities, because as long as the mind remains absorbed in fruitive work, for material enjoyment, there is no chance of getting out from conditional life or material bondage. No one should follow the suicidal policy of neglecting one's supreme task of attaining the highest perfection of life, namely going back home, back to Godhead. Jai mm Srila -hmm. Prabhupada. Yeah. And the more we hear about the spiritual world, the more we will de develop that desire to go back home, back to God. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Your lotus feet are the only saving grace in this horrible material world. Thank you for <laughs> your mercy, your compassion, your unending patience and your tolerance. It is just our great good fortune that you have taken birth in this material world to save us. Thank you so much. It's all the mercy of Srila Prabhupada only.
अनुराधा माता जी प्लीज कॉल थैंक यू या थैंक यू हाय कृष्ण महाराज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सच अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्लास महाराज आई हैव लाइक अ प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम सो आई वुड जस्ट लाइक टू नो आई मीन दिस इज समथिंग दैट हैज बीन एवर सिंस आई एम हियरिंग दिस सेक्शन ऑफ भारत महाराज टर्न ऑन योर कैमरा प्लीज या सॉरी सिंगल गुलाब जामुन यू टू खम बैक सो so in a situation like that you know when we need to keep our diet simple life simple but we are living with other family members which may not at this point of time it may not be that attractive to them especially the children you know if we do not cook something sumptuous they might feel like going out and eating so for that we need to and talking for myself my mentor told me once that you know you cannot go into the fire and try to save yourself so you know cooking everything everything for everyone everyone else and just cooking a simple khichdi for myself it uh, it physically and mentally will be both difficult for me so while this process when we are trying to accommodate everybody into krishna consciousness especially talking about family members and as prabhupad as mata ji was so wonderfully reading that at least last 10 15 years keeping yourself for krishna consciousness completely I don't see a uh, reconciliation between the two, Maharaj. I don't know if I kept my question clear. I can put it in one line, if possible. Well, you have one va- you have one value system that you want to follow, and then, but because you're connected with certain family members and others, they have another value system, and you seem to be in the position of providing for them. So that's the essence of the question. How yes, to? Yes. yeah yes, how to yes. keep keep your own values and mm-hmm. at the same time don't cause them to go away and act independently doing things mm-hmm. on their own yes yeah well i think yeah, along with that you have to instruct them you know keep provide for them but instruct them at the same time yes maharaj but uh, i am just worried that you know uh, if uh, in between uh, i don't have enough time to do i mean i have enough time to do krishna consciousness but not the way that a sincere devotee should be doing so i'm just worrying and in between if i leave my body i it will be you know i know krishna says how much ever you have done that much is calculated but you know don't not sure if i'll get a human body again and will be able to so yeah, and my honor yeah just whatever you're doing even if you feel it's less than what you want to do in terms of the amount then do it with more intention more devotion more intelligence in other words try to qual- put qual- more and more quality in whatever you're doing right now and if you can increase that may not always be so easy because of time constraints and other responsibilities but we can find happiness in the in putting more and more attention and quality in the, in the activities we're already performing in all levels whether it's hearing chanting associating or just serving so think about how to put more time attention quality and more devotion in all of these things and uh, the more you become krishna conscious the more you can influence others in whatever in whatever need they need to be inspired in so building up our own krishna consciousness is is also a way to also serve others where they also grow in their spiritual life so we may not always be able to adjust the situation but we can at least increase the quality of whatever we're doing uh and the uh, while doing for others because i have my own anarthas you know i understand physically i should be having simple prasadam but while making for them i feel greedy and it is my own anartha that i am not able to control and you know do sitting and talking to them so that they feel comfortable they feel like because mata ji they are the center of the family and if they are aloof and their own 
the others feel very left out so you know try, try to do that uh, as i understand the quality but i am also scared that you know i may go back where i started to so please um, bless me maharaj so that while doing for others i keep my own sincerity and because it is my own anatha it is not their problem it is my own problem So I think I think the the thing that'll make the difference between success and failure is while you're going through this, you're just praying to Krishna to help you and protect you, and He's right there, and He will help you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please bless me, Maharaj, so that I can continue. Hare Krishna, Dandavatti. Hare Krishna. Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All the devotees, Shri Prabhu, Padmo, Prabhu, Sukha, Baha, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for the lovely class, Guru Maharaj. It was so good, and I know it is so clear for us, Lord. But sometimes for the other devotees, it is really difficult to make them understand how important it is for them to um, follow more of the Krishna consciousness at, towards the end of their life as well. You know. um it is happening in the family and i'm trying my level best to help but i can't can you guide me for that please in the family yes it is oh, okay. a family okay all right your daughter she's she's very krishna conscious it's not the it's not the youngsters guru mara just the old it's the old generation. fellows <laughs> yes exactly uh I think you need women's intuition to be the inspiration by which Krishna will give you the understanding and how to manage that situation. Uh, the situation is not so bad because I also know the situation, but uh, not completely, but enough to understand that <clears throat> there is a good, very good possibility for change. And I think a lot of the change can also be inspired by creating the association. That is true, but it is very difficult for them to get association at this stage because of the condition and the place where they are at the moment. Mm. Unfortunately. Yeah. If you if you do things together and put put yourself to put your both of yourself in a, in good association and that will inspire that mm -hmm. person more and more thank you so yeah yeah it, it, it is helping but it's not like i want uh, maybe my expectations are too much as well because uh, you know when i see that the age and stuff and the the things they are doing is not like well people don't change so easy as they get older mm -hmm. you know they say it's so very hard to teach an old dog new tricks but by your love and by your association that's that's going to be the, the the determining factor okay thank you so much guru maharaj need your blessings for that <laughs> can i can help them <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, very, very beautiful class, Maharaj. I have a question. Uh, we were talking about the material uh, um, material positions or material enjoyment and i have a question about uh, how we should understand about uh, this thing like if we are if we are uh, praying to the lord for the basic needs of our material life like a little bit of basic things is that also an entanglement in this in this uh, or i or is that that is also material should we don't do that also how should we our mood practice yeah, the basic Generally, whatever you need to maintain yourself, Krishna will provide automatically. You don't have to provide. You don't have to pray for that. You should make a little endeavor in that direction in order to secure these things. A little endeavor, but that's not something we pray for. We pray for devotion. We pray for detachment. We pray for 
you know, greater amounts of opportunities for service. So yeah, don't worry. Those these things like, well, you know, is Krishna going to give me the food I need tomorrow? Don't worry about that. He's taking care of me. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, that that's something we don't pray for. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for such a beautiful class. Thank you. Dear devotees, any other realization, last minute realizations or questions, please go ahead. Maharaj, Indulekha Mataji is thanking you for such a beautiful class. She loved it. Uh, she is uh, saying it's a very inspiring uh, for all of us for the progress in Krishna consciousness. She's uh, paying uh, her obeisances to you, Maharaj. Indulekha Mataji. Thank you, Mother Undulekha. Each one of us has so many opportunities to move forward in Krishna consciousness. So when we get together and discuss the philosophy, we can start seeing the opportunities coming more and more available. Very true, Maharaj. This uh, family seems uh, better than our real materialist family, honestly speaking. <laughs> yeah. It is the real family yes. because devotees care about each other. Very true, Maharaj. Genuinely, they care about each other. And that's what, that's what makes up a devotee. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very beautiful class. Just uh, straightforward, right to the point, no right and left. Go to Vrindavan. That's the message. <laughs> after 50, <laughs> after 50. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Can I squeeze in one last? Sure, Mataji. Please, please, Mataji. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Gail here. Um, you know, just following up on this last point that we should not pray for our basic needs, you know. Um, we should pray only for a devotion. And so when we see that there are others in the world um, who don't seem to be getting their basic needs that, you know, people die of starvation, they die of this, they die of that, you know, yes, mortality is there, we're in, we're in mortal bodies, so we gotta die of something, but how to understand or have confidence that our basic needs will be met when there are people who are struggling for their basic needs? You mean, how will that affect us? <laughs> No, no. Well, how, how to have confidence that Krishna will provide for our basic needs when we see that it doesn't seem that everybody is getting their basic needs met because there is such a thing as starvation and, you know. Well, that's due, that starvation is due to mismanagement by the, by the leaders in the world. That's all that's due. There's plenty of everything. That's just polit that's po po politics. Prabhupada even said that due to the greed of the, of the politicians and the, the controllers, you know, they simply uh, steal everything and, and they don't provide for anyone or don't, and they don't give people the opportunity. It's all due to mismanagement, or not mismanagement, but just greed. But for devotees, Krishna says, you know, Prabhupada used to say, don't you think that if you engage in devotional service, Krishna won't take, won't take, care, won't, won't take care of you? And he takes care of you automatically. And there's that story about Arjuna Acharya. If you know that story, it's a beautiful story. How this one South Indian Brahmana, he was uh, reading one verse, and it said that, uh, what is that verse? Uh, that I carry with you lag and I preserve with you hand. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.22. And so um, he was a poor Brahmana that would go out daily begging for his food. And that was part of his, his, his service, just to beg for food so he could have enough for him and his wife. There was no family, just the two of them. And uh, so when he's reading this verse, he thinks this is wrong. Something's wrong here. You know, I... Krishna says, I carry with you the need and I preserve with you have. So he crossed, he crossed, he crossed it out with a red pen. 
And then he went out for his begging and he was gone most of the day. While he was gone, two young boys came, two beautiful boys, and they came with a whole bag of groceries to his wife and they, and she opened the door. She was surprised to see, oh, these beautiful boys. And then they said, well, actually these groceries are sent by your husband. He told us that to bring him to you and he beat us. He beat us really badly. And he said, if you don't bring him, I'm gonna beat you more. So uh, we're here and here they are. So thank you. And they left. <laughs> it was Krishna and Balaram, actually. And so, and then she's shocked. And these two, why was my husband so cruel to these boys? Why? And then he came home and that day he couldn't get anything. So she said, thank you for sending so many nice groceries, those two boys. Well, why did you beat them? She, he said, what boys? I don't know any boys. I didn't beat anybody. I didn't get anything today. And she said she showed all the groceries that they had. Then he understood. And then when he went over to his, his Bhagavad Gita, he saw that the line that he scratched out was not scratched out. <laughs> Krishna says that, yeah, he provides everything automatically. I think that we, we see that in our life all the time. You know, I mean, it's just so evident that, that Krishna is just providing so many things, even without our efforts, it just happens. So should we understand that he has a different standard for his non-devotees? Well, the non-devotees are working under, the, under, under his material energy. And so they don't take shelter of him. They depend on the material energy. Those who depend on him, everything is provided. Those who take depend on the material energy, sometimes they get and sometimes they don't. Material energy works that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. And because they're working under the material energy, they don't have the intelligence on how to do things either, because material energy destroys that intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You could be under the care of your loving parents, or you can be under the care of the Punishing uncle. <laughs> we, we can say that, you know, I mean, Krishna is the ultimate controller. So um, those who are taking shelter of the material energy, Krishna is like taking care of them in that, of taking care of them in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, in, in, but, but not completely. He also says that, man, because, I want to give my care to everyone, but then no one, they don't come to me. They go to my, they go to material energy. Material energy is the three modes of material energy. And they, they work in a certain way. So as soon as you connect with, the, with any of the modes, you're gonna get a particular reaction based on that, your activity. It's gonna be good, uh, bad, or a mixture of good and bad like that. And that depends on their karma also as they build up their activities. Well, I was, I was thinking that taking shelter of the material energy means depending strictly on your karma for your well, welfare. Yeah, but uh, you don't even know your own karma. So you no, don't. no. I mean, not, they don't knowingly do so, but I'm saying that's what's actually happening, right? That. Yeah, and, and therefore they're getting the three results, good, bad, or mixed, according to material standards. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. We are very <laughs> grateful to you, Maharaj. Thank you for your valuable time, Maharaj, also. Yes, Maharaj. And uh, we look forward. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my blessings with all glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you, thank you so much for your association. All you do for us, very, very grateful to you, Maharaj. Thank you, Shamagori, for taking care of us travelers when we came to your home. <laughs> it's your home, Maharaj. Not oh, it's, it's yours. It's too big for me. <laughs> <laughs> to make for me also, Maharaj. <laughs> it's a Jagannath home. 
It's a temple. Yeah, it's like a temple. Check in this, please. Thank you to all the devotees. You always have such a wonderful group of devotees who come and yeah. take part in this program. So, can I ask a question, Maharaj? Um, yeah, <laughs> of okay. course. So, Maharaj, uh, sometimes you know, devotees have to face some miseries. So, is it because of uh, Krishna? Is sometimes you say, Oh, Krishna is testing. So, Krishna is testing, or because of Maya, or because of three months of material nature, or because of karma. Don't know. Yeah, that question comes up a lot. And we say, Don't worry about it. Just take shelter, Krishna. That's all. <laughs> well, how it comes, you, you may not always know. But Krishna says in the, in the, I mean, Lord Brahma speaks that verse in the Bhagavatam. Tate nukampa shushamikshamanam ujaneva krita vipakam. Vidvava Habir Vidadana Maste Jiveti Yomukti Padesha Dayabak. So that particular verse illustrates that when difficulties come, the devotees thank the Lord as an opportunity to go deeper into their relationship with the Lord and accept the suffering as the grace of the Lord. That's a special, that's special mercy by the Lord. And then the, the last line, if one accepts the mercy of the Lord in that way and thanks the Lord, then Mukti Padesha Dayabhat, the kingdom of God is guaranteed. Yes, Maharaj, here uh, you gave class in Charlotte. There also you said that sometimes mercy comes in the form of misery. So that really struck me. You know? It's not really misery. It looks like misery. Yeah, yeah. Because we see it that way. When you see it in a different way, you know, some people, they, they get, just like I'll give you an example, like we preach in jail. So I get letters from inmates saying, thank you, you know. Uh, you know, it's good, it's good that I actually went to jail because I was able to meet the devotees in jail. Yeah. yeah. He said, they say, would say, if I didn't go to jail, probably I wouldn't have, I never had a chance to practice Krishna consciousness. So, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's an example. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your association. We are, we are, we are very fortunate you know, being with you. Thank you, Maharaj. We beg for your association again in the future, Maharaj, as soon as you can. That will be so great of you. It's so beautiful to have you with us. You're just an example for all of us. Also, in the purport, you know, it says about America. You, I, I was listening to your, um, to your um, introduction and you were born in America. We as East Indian, 100 million people, billion people, they want to go to America and for you from America went to Vrindavan. So you are example for us, Maharaj. Please be with us. Uh, as more as you can, Maharaj, as much as you can. Please, thank you, Maharaj. Let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj, all the devotees. Vancha Kalapataru Vashika Sipa Sunduve Vacha Vacha Nam Vaishnavipyo Namo Nama Vaishnavipyo Namo Nama Vaishnavipyo Namo Nama